In this video, we are going to talk about section 7.2, that's matchings and graphs and scheduling problems. So uh, first off, we need to talk about bipartite graphs. So a graph G is called bipartite if the chromatic number of G is less than or equal to two. Uh, so remember what that means is uh, that you can color the vertices with uh, exactly two colors and two or less colors, right? Such that uh, no two adjacent vertices have the same color. So here's an example where I've colored uh, some of the vertices red, right? And some of the vertices blue. Uh, you can see that no two adjacent vertices have the same color in this graph. Okay, so that graph is bipartite. Uh, one characterization of a bipartite graph is a graph G is bipartite if and only if the vertices of G can be partitioned into two sets, V1 and V2, such that every edge of G has one endpoint in V1 and one endpoint in V2. So uh, it's pretty straightforward, right? If it's bipartite, well, then we get this vertex coloring with two colors. And so you would take V1 to be, you know, all the red vertices and V2 to be all the blue vertices. And um, that's going to have this property, right? Because if you have an edge in this graph, um, we know that um, the endpoints have to be different colors, right? So one endpoint has to be in one set and the other in the other set as well. And then likewise, if you can um, find a partition, and remember by partition, it means that these two sets are um, empty. Are they, sorry, not empty, but their intersection is empty, right? They have nothing, no vertices in common. So that's important, right? That's what this partition implies that. And that their union, right, is, is all of the vertices. So, uh, if you can find this partition, well, then just color all of the vertices in one of the partitions, one color, and um, all of the uh, vertices in the other cell of the partition, then the other color, right? And because they have this property, that's going to be a, a proper vertex coloring with um, two uh, colors. So therefore, it would be bipartite. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next definition that we have is about a complete bipartite graph. Uh, so a complete bipartite graph, K sub N comma N, is a bipartite graph whose N plus N vertices can be partitioned into two sets, V1 and V2, with the cardinality of V1 is M and the cardinality of V2 is N. Uh, and then every edge has one endpoint in V1 and one endpoint in V2, and every vertex of V1 is adjacent to every vertex of V2. And notice that implies vice versa as well. So here is an example of a graph that's bipartite, but not a complete bipartite, right? Here's a red vertex that's not adjacent to this blue vertex. So that fails to be a complete bipartite, where this is a complete bipartite graph, right? Every vertex, blue vertex, is adjacent to every red vertex, and vice versa. Okay. So, in a sense, right, this has all possible edges that you could have in there and still uh, be bipartite. Uh, another characterization of a bipartite graph, a graph G is bipartite if and only if every cycle in G has even length. Okay, so if a graph um, a G is bipartite, right, then, um, then uh, we know we can color it with two um, colors, right? I have a vertex coloring with two or less colors. And so um, if it has an odd cycle, well, that wouldn't be possible, right? Um, so if you have a graph G that's bipartite and suppose you have an odd length cycle, well, then that odd length cycle can only be um, properly colored, vertex colored, right, with three colors. And that would be a contradiction to the fact that the graph is bipartite. And so um, then going the other direction, right, if every cycle in G uh, has even length, um, well, 
then what you can do is define a coloring by whether or not um, uh, on the distances uh, from some fixed vertex uh, in, in, in the graph and do it that way. So um, and then all of the vertex, all of the vertices that are an odd length away, color one color, all of the vertices that are an even length away, uh, even path away, then you can color um, a different color and that will give you a two coloring. Uh, so there's lots of details that need to be verified there, but uh, we won't do that in this video. A corollary of this theorem is that all trees are bipartite, right? Uh, trees have this property. Every cycle in G has even length, right? Because there are no cycles in um, a tree, right? So they all have, are essentially zero length. And so therefore trees are bipartite. Um, you can also think of this as um, satisfying, trees satisfy this property vacuously, right? If uh, P or C is a cycle in a tree, then C has even length. Well, there are no cycles in a tree, right? So the first part of the if then uh, statement is false and that makes it true, right? Vacuous the true. So all trees are bipartite. All right, what we wanna talk about are matchings. So a matching in a bipartite graph is a subgraph that is regular of degree one, right? So all of the vertices have degree one. Okay, and then a maximum matching is a matching that has the most edges possible in there. Uh, so here you can see that um, this is an example of a matching, right? So here um, the green vertices are is the subgraph, right, that I'm talking about with the matching. Uh, so this is a matching, but it is not a maximum matching, right, because I could add another edge in there as well, okay? So I could put another edge in here um, and have another matching. And in fact, that's what I did over here, right? So this is a maximum matching, meaning that uh, no matching in this graph has more um, edges than three. There's other ma uh, matchings for sure, right? But none of them have more than three edges in here. Uh, the minute you try to add any more right to this one it's going to um, uh, not be a matching any longer but um, that's uh, not universally true that that that's the case as we'll see later on uh, that's really what's called a maximal matching right um, but this one is a maximum matching All right, so what we want to be able to do is, given a bipartite graph, we want to find um, a maximum matching in an efficient way. So we're after an, an efficient algorithm for finding a maximum matching in a bipartite graph, and there's an algorithm called the Hungarian algorithm for finding um, the maximum matching in a bipartite graph. All right, so we have some terminology to get through before we can get to the details of the Hungarian algorithm. So first off, uh, given a matching M in a bipartite graph, an M alternating path in the graph is a path whose edges alternate between the edges in M and edges not in M. So here you can see we've got a, um, a bipartite graph and the matching right are those edges that are colored green All right and so if you take a look at this path e3 so that's this path right here from e to 3 that was a black edge right and then c to 3 a green edge and then from c uh, to 2 along a black edge and then from b to 2 b2 along a green edge right so that is an M alternating path from the vertex E to the vertex B, right? Because it alternates. The black um, edges are not in the matching. The green edges are, right? So it alternated black, green, black, green. So that's an M alternating path.
Okay, so one of the things that we're going to have to do in the Hungarian algorithm is to find m alternating paths. So what we would do is, or what we want to do in the Hungarian algorithm is start with an unmatched vertex and find an m alternating path by building up m alternating paths step by step. So in this example here, I'm going to find um, D is unmatched, right? This is an unmatched vertex in this matching, right? Because um, you can see there's no green edge coming into it. No edge of the matching has D. And I can't really add any edge uh, to, this, uh, to this matching either, right? You can see that um, if I add uh, this edge from D to one, I can't do that because then this vertex right here, one, will be a vertex of degree two, right? And remember, in a matching, all the vertices have to have degree one. And then I can't add this one to two either as well. So, um, so this matching is maximal in the sense that I can't add any more edges to it, but it is not a maximum matching. We can see that we can finagle this around and get some more edges in the matching. All right, for, though, for right now, all we want to do is to find these M alternating paths. So with D, right, there's basically two ways we could go. We could go from D over to vertex one or over to vertex two, right? And th that's this tree over here. Um, it's, not, it's not really a tree um, in the sense that we were talking about, um, that we have been talking about before. But this is basically just me uh, or a way of um, writing down the the different possible alternating paths that that we could take. So starting with D, you can either go from to one or two. So let's say we go to one, right? If we're up here at vertex one, well then, uh, since D to one was a black edge, we ha we know that we have to go on a green edge over here. So we take this green edge over to A. So it goes over here. Okay, and then from A, we have a couple of choices, right? Since from one to A was a green edge, we can take this edge over to two, or we can take this edge over to four. If you take this edge over to four, well, that's a dead end, right? And that's as long as that path can get. If we go to two, right, then we'll be here at two, and now we have to take a green path, right, since that was a black path. So here we don't have any choice but to go to B, Right, and then at B, we have a couple of choices. We have one and five, but if we go to one, right, that means that this will no longer be a path because we'll have introduced a cycle in there. So the only real choice here is to go to five. So you can see that represents all of the possible um, alternating paths that I can take, right, starting at D and going by edge one. And then I do the same thing for this other edge here. So from D to two, that will take me uh, here, right? And then at two, I have to now go on a green vertex. So that leaves me no choice but to go to B, um, to B, right? And then at B, I need to take a black edge out so I can go either go to one or five. If I go to five, that's a dead end, right? If I go to one, then um, I would have to then go to A, right? To keep the path going. And so because uh, this was a black edge and now I would have to go on a green edge. Uh, and then I can either choose this edge going to two or this one going to four, but I can't do two, right? Because that means that I will have introduced a cycle in there. Uh, so I can't do that. So that means that to keep the path going, I would have to go to four and that's a dead end right there, okay? All right, so here I've basically described all of the alternating paths that I could take. And notice I'm like reusing these vertices uh, labelings here. So it's not really like a, um, you know, it's not exactly a graph like we've been talking about before. It's just a convenient way. Uh, just th think of it as a convenient way to write down the, um, the all the paths, right, without having to list them out exhaustively uh, one by one. Okay. So that's a way to find the M alternating paths uh, systematically. All right, looks like I cut out my definition. 
here. Uh, so let's um, pull up the book and take a look at it. So I messed that up. All right, so um, the next definition is for M augmenting path. So an M alternating path that joins two unmatched vertices is called an M augmenting path, okay? So an egg M augmenting path is an M alternating path, right? That joins two unmatched vertices. So looking at um, the situation that I have here, um, D is an unmatched vertice, vertex, right? And then so is four, right? So this path, if I go from D to one, one to A and A to four, that is an uh, M augmenting path. And so is this one right here from D to one, one to A, A to two, two to B and B to five. Right, because five is an M augmenting uh, path. These are unmatched vertices here. And likewise, so are these here as well. Okay. Um, so those are extremely important in the um, Hungarian algorithm. And the reason why is because if you find an M augmenting path, what that means is that you can actually get an extra edge uh, in your matching. Okay, and so the way that you would do that, the way that you would do that is you would pick, well, you know, one of these M augmenting paths that you found. And then basically what you would do is just flip the colors, right? Flip them from black to green or green to black. That is, if the edge in the M augmenting path is not in the matching, then put it in there. And if it is in there, like this one, then take it out and do that all along the path. All right, and so an example of that is is here. Okay, what I'm going to do, what I did is take this path from D to 1, 1 to A, A to 2, 2 to B, and B to 5. So what I would do is D to 1, this edge right here, was not in the matching. So I am going to put that in the matching. And then I'm going to flip all those. So D to 1 is in there now. 1 to A, which was in this matching here, right, this edge right here, you can see it's colored green here and here, I take it back out. So it's out of the matching now. This edge from A to 2 was not in the um, original matching that we had. Uh, what I'm going to do is add it in there. All right, and so you can see it went from black to green. This edge from two to B, it was in the original matching, right? You can see it here. This is the M augmenting path that I chose. You can see now I switched it to be out of the matching. And then originally this uh, edge from B to five right here was not in the matching. So I switched it right to be in the matching. And you can see what that does Originally, I had two green vertices, right? And then because I fl flipped them all, now I get three green vertices where I only had two before. And it's still a matching. You can still verify, right? All of the vertices are degree one, right? All of the green ones, right? That subgraph, it's all degree one, so it's a matching. And now, instead of having only three in there, right? I have one, two, three, four. Okay, so you can see here it looks like, oh, you might think, oh, this is a maximum matching, right? I can't get any more edges in there. And that's true the way this is, right? I can't add any edges and get to D, right? Because there are no matches from D to 4 or E to, or no edges from D to 4 or E to 5. So there's no way I can add those in there. Uh, so this is maximal in the sense that you can't add any, add any edges to that but it's not maximum, right? It means that, okay, maybe you made a really bad choice uh, here, okay, with these first edges, right? And so, um, 
you can see that if you can find an M augmenting path, right, then you can actually squeeze an extra edge into the matching. Okay, uh, so these are extremely important. Okay, so that brings us to the Hungarian algorithm. In the Hungarian algorithm, uh, remember, this is going to give us a, a maximum matching, right? And so um, start with any matching, okay? And so normally what I, what I do is just, um, just like I did here. Um, I just, you know, take and find uh, A could go to one here and this one, B could go to two. So you could go to three and uh, D basically I couldn't choose in, I couldn't add an, ex an edge in there and I couldn't add an edge in here. Okay. So just, just try and get one. And, and we already, we've already seen that this is not the best. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, just try and throw in as many edges as you can. You don't have to worry about it. All right. All right, and so what you're going to do is mark all of the red vertices eligible, okay? Uh, that's just a way of keeping track of the status of the red vertices, whether you've already um, gone through those or not. Uh, and then in step two, you're going to ask yourself, are there any unmatched eligible red vertices? So, uh, and if, if there's not, then you've got a maximum matching, okay? Uh, then... Uh, if there are unmatched eligible red vertices, right, then go to step three. All right, and so if you've got an unmatched eligible red vertex, right, then what you want to do is find all possible M alternating paths coming from that vertex. All right, that's just like I showed you here, right, on how to do those. And so there's two cases. If you have that M augmenting path, right? And then what you want to do, if you have one of those, is just flop the edges and then mark all red vertices as eligible and go to step two. Okay, so if you had previously, previously marked any of the red vertices ineligible, just mark them as eligible and then go back, right? And, and keep going through these steps. Um, if you have no... Uh, M augmenting path from that vertex V, right? Then mark that vertex V ineligible and go back to step two, okay? Um, and so let's take a look at an example and it's just the same graph that we were looking at before, All right? It says use the Hungarian algorithm to find a maximum matching, okay? So here is the bipartite graph that we are starting out with. And start with any matching, right? So this matching, I already told you how I picked it, right? It, just because it was easy, right? I just uh, join all those edges straight across. Uh, I actually like just joined it to A to the first one that it was um, adjacent to, B to the first one it was adjacent to, and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. And then uh, find uh, all M alternating paths from red eligible unmatched vertex D, right? So D was unmatched. So I'm going to do this where I look at all of the M alternating paths. I already showed you how I did that, right? And so, and again, the one I'm going to flip is this one going from D to 1 to A to 2 to B to 5. All right. That's um, M alternating. Um, uh, and it's M augmenting more importantly than that, right? So that's the question that you're going to ask. Is that M augmenting? It is, right? And so you're going to flip those vertices. Uh, so if they were not in the matching before, then you're going to put them in. If they were in the matching before, then you're going to take those out. That's exactly the example that I showed you. And you can see now I get an extra edge uh, that's in there. All right. Then what I would do is uh, mark all of the vertices as eligible, right? And then go back to that step two. And then I would say, hey, are there any unmatched eligible red vertices? And there are, right? E right here. 
So E is unmatched, and so I'm going to do the same thing with E. I'm going to find all of the M alternating paths from vertex E, right? And so uh, starting with E, I can either go to 3 or 2. If I go to 2, right, then I've got to go to A because that is, um, it's got to be alternating, right? Because E to 2 was a black edge, then I must take a green edge out of 2, and so that would take me to A. Uh, then I can t I have to take a black edge out of A, so that's either going to 1 or it's going to 4. Well, 4 is a dead end, right? If I go to 1, right, then I must take a green edge out of 1, right? And that would take me to D, and then from D, uh, the only black edge is back to 2, and I can't do that, right, because that would give me a um, cycle in there. And then if I take the edge from E to 3, then I have to follow a green edge next. So that would take me to C. From uh, black edge would take me to 2. And then I have to take a green edge out of 2. That would get me to A. And then I'm back here in this situation. I can go to 4 or 1. 4 is a dead end, right? And 1 is um, takes me back to D, right? Uh, so these paths that go from E to D are M alternating for sure, right? But they're not M augmenting. Uh, the ones that go from E to four are M augmenting, right? Uh, because E and four are unmatched, right? Uh, so I'm just gonna pick this one right here. The one that goes from E to two, two to A, A to four, right? And that's an M augmenting pass. So I'm going to flip, right? I'm going to then change the color of the edge from E to 2 to green. The edge from A, 2 to A, I'm going to change to black, right? And the edge from A to 4, I'm going to change to green. In other words, I'm taking and putting the black edges into the matching and I'm removing this green edge, the edge from 2 to A from the matching. And so that would look like this. Okay. All right. And then now I can see, right, that there are no red eligible unmatched vertices left after that. All right. All of them. And so this is a maximum. Um, this is a maximum. Um, matching okay all right and so uh, you can see that uh, again the difference between maximal which is this one was maximal because you can't add any edges to it but it's not maximum right there's matchings with way more edges right in them than than three right this one has one two three four five right so um that's how the Hungarian algorithm works. All right, and uh, one of the applications of this is to scheduling problems. So an example of this says an accounting firm has eight CPAs available and seven audits to be scheduled. The table shows which of the CPAs are qualified for the various audits. There's an X under audit N if the CPA is qualified. Find an assignment of qualified CPAs to the audits. All right, and so this table basically tells you what um, uh, CPA can handle which audit. So um, when you go to set this up into a graph, um, then one of the issues is that um, in the the way our book does the um, does the Hungarian algorithm, uh, the they want the red vertex set right to be um, to be uh, cardinality less than or equal to um, the blue vertex set. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter really a huge amount, but that's just the way it's set up. So in this case, we have seven audits and we have eight uh, CPAs. So that means you're gonna need to make these uh, the red vertices, okay? So you can see that's how I have it set up over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here I have uh, the eight. Um, the eight um, 
CPAs over here. All right, so I made those the blue. And it doesn't matter really what side you put it on. And again, it, does, it really doesn't matter over here as, as well, but just the way that I've talked about the algorithm, that's this is how you want to set this up. Okay. All right, so, um, and so what I've done is when there's an X, right, I've just added an edge in there. So right here from uh, audit one, uh, CPA B and CPA E are capable of uh, handling that. They're qualified to do that. So here you can see that means I have an edge from one to B and from one to E like so. And then uh, two, um, audit two can be handled by CPA D, E, F, or G. So again, right, I draw an edge between two and D, two and E, two and F, and two and G, and so on and so forth, okay? And so that's the setup on this, right? So that's how you get kind of from the uh, English language uh, version of it to the graph. And then you can use the Hungarian algorithm on it. Although on this one, when I went ahead, right, and did the um, initial matching, it just worked out, which was odd. So it makes me not trust it. But just if I go one to B and then two to D, that D was the uh, first one that I could connect up to uh, to two. And then uh, three, right, could go to A. Uh, then four, the uh, lowest one that that can connect to is F, right? Because uh, because the others B and A, right, are already used, and there is no edge between four and C. D was already used, right? No edge from four to E, so it was four to F. And then five uh, only goes to A or G, and A was already. Uh, matched so I put this down to G and then that left me with uh, 7 and E here okay and that's that's it so this is um, right all of the red vertices are uh, there are no unmatched and so I got a maximum matching right off the bat which is a little odd I figured they would at least make you use the Hungarian algorithm but um, Anyway, uh, so if you didn't get lucky, right, then then that's what you would do. Run through the steps uh, of the Hungarian algorithm to get your maximum uh, matching. Okay. All right. So that is it on this uh, video.